In part one, we discussed how you can estimate a VAR model and how you can specify the model. On the screen is an example of what we use in the part one of the series, where we have a VAR model with three variables, and we specify two lags each for the variables in the system. In that case, our k equals two. And this is the EVUS output for the result. You can see up here, vector autoregression estimates. And each of these stands for the output relating to each of the dependent variable. Remember, we use two lags each for the variables on the system. So in total, we'll be having 21 coefficients. That is, seven each for each variable. For instance, for the log of PCE, this is a coefficient for its first lag. Another coefficient here for the second lag of log of PCE. This is the coefficient for the log of PDI, the first lag. This is the coefficient for the second lag of the log of PDI. Here is the coefficient for the first lag of the log of GDP. And here is the coefficient for the second lag for the log of GDP. And this is the constant in that equation. So in total, we have seven coefficients for the log of PCE, for the log of PDI, and for the log of GDP, totaling 21 coefficients. And if you go to the bottom of the output, you will see the number of coefficients to be 21. But one thing you will observe from the output is that we have the coefficients. Following that, in parentheses, are the standard errors. And beneath the standard errors are the t-statistics. The standard errors simply tell you the deviation that occurs from predicting the slope coefficients accurately. That is the interpretation for the standard errors. While the t-statistics can be obtained by dividing the coefficients with their respective standard errors. But one thing you also see here is that you don't know the statistical significance of each of these standard errors. Reason because we don't have the p-values. It is the p-values that gives the statistical significance for a t-statistic. So you cannot know how significant a t-value is without its respective probability value. So to obtain the p-values for these estimates, we go to PROC up here. You click on that. After that, you maneuver to make system and you click on order by variable. When you click on that, eViews will specify the model to you exactly the way we did here in our equation. So in total, there are 21 um, coefficients, seven for each of the equation. So to obtain the pro value, I'll simply click on estimate button here. Remember I told you that VAR is being estimated by the ordinary least squares technique. So I don't change anything here. I simply click OK. So here you can see now each of the coefficients now have their respective probability values vis-a-vis -vis the t statistics that we had before and their standard errors. So it is from these p-values now, you can now reject or not reject the null depending on what the probability value is. Before, we didn't have the p-values, so we wouldn't know how significant, how significant the t-statistics are. But that has changed now with the pro value that we now have. Remember, you give your interpretation the Ceteris Paribus arguments because these are just simply OLS estimates. So you can say, for instance, uh, given that um, C1 is the coefficient of the first lag of PCE, and it's a log-log formation, so your interpretation is going to be in elasticity form. Then always look at the signs of the coefficient. It tells you the direction of impact. Is it going to be an increase or a decline in the dependent variable? So always look out for the sign of the coefficient. I also want to draw your attention that beneath this output on the screen here, you have the equation stated out for each of the dependent variables. So you can easily explain the features or the characteristics of these equations. Let's take a look at the Dobbin Watson. The Dobbin Watson statistics tells you whether your model is suffering from serial correlation or not. 
But looking at the W. Watson statistics for the log of PCE equation at 2.11, we can say that this model is free from serial correlation. We can also say the same concerning the log of PDI, which has a Dobbin Watson value of 1.9. 1.9 is very close to 2, so I will conclude that this model does not suffer from serial correlation. Likewise, the log of GDP equation with a Dobbin Watson statistics of 2.05 clearly does not suffer from serial correlation. So in retrospect, we can say that this model is good. Another thing I want to point you to is that you can actually determine the joint significance of variables in a particular equation. For instance, relating to the log of PCE, you may want to know the significance of the log of, of the first lag of GDP and the second lag of GDP on the log of PCE. And you can also do, you can always get that using the world test. So to obtain the joint significance for the variables in your model, simply go to view, click on coefficient diagnostics and select world coefficient test. Once you do that, you specify the null hypothesis, which is simply C5 equals c6 equals zero. I have the test statistic, the value, the degree of freedom, and the probability value. And I'm only interested in the probability value, which is statistically significant at the 1% level. So given this result, I am rejecting the null hypothesis that c5 equals c6 equals zero. I am rejecting that hypothesis. Because I can see here that the coefficients of the log of GDP, that, that is the first log, and the second log of the log of GDP have um, statistical impact on the log of PCE. So given the result from the world test, I can say that those two variables have a joint significance on log of PCE. Going back to our results, I will just simply do a recap by saying that once you obtain your results, and you don't have your prop value, you know what to do. Simply go to proc, go to make system, click order by variable. Once you click order by variable, eViews gives you your model all spelled out this way. Click on estimates, don't change anything on this screen, and just click OK. There you have your probability value. And I've also shown you how you can test for joint significance. And you can make a lot of um, empirical statements from your result. You can also go ahead to discuss each of the equations that make up the entire model individually. You can discuss their various specifications, their Dobbin Watson statistics, discuss the R squared statistics, and so on and so forth. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. I hope you have learned a lot regarding how you can estimate and how you can discuss your results on VAR. Stay tuned for more tutorials. Thank you for staying with us.